So, it's just a little, it's a little sped up. So what happens when you have children's always, always. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the, the support from the Ween community has been tremendous. I, I feel like I say that about so many groups, but when my buddy Andrew from PRS sent it to me, I was like, okay, and you don't know what, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, he texted me and he's like, dude, I got friends texting me. You know, I got people sending me messages saying for this ween, that one. And I was like, oh my God, we've stumbled. We've really stumbled into something here, haven't we? Now, uh, I love the whole vibe. I love the whole that there's that there's this creature that they summoned, the, you know, the hail boognish. I love the whole theme of, the, of this weird and wild band that defies description. That, that sentence in itself is like, okay, you got me. Right, and the music, one hundred percent, has the same message. It is weird. It is wild. Not intuitive at all. Unpredictable, um, and each song's very, very different. I watched, I watched Diener do an interview on guitar moves, and I was like, wow, this dude is wild. And so I actually shot him an ice cold message and I was like, dude, I would love to have you on my channel uh, for an interview, guitar lesson, you know, just hang out and talk, whatever. Dude writes me back. He goes, my son uh, actually just showed me this. He found it on Reddit. He said, I'd love to be awesome. And then I wrote him back. I said, dude, let's find a time. And then crickets, crickets. So maybe this video, and maybe with some of your help, we can you know bring his attention back to it and get him to come on and uh, do a show with me because I would love it. I would absolutely love it. So anyhow, I'm on my website, guitargate.com. It's where all my courses and lessons are, right? And as you guys know, as a subscriber, you get to requ request reacts for YouTube, and I do a couple a week. Um, that are just from subscribers. And sure enough, Be Weir 1227 shoots me, shoots me Ween a Tear for Eddie. Um, it's a Ween tribute to Eddie Hazel. Now, I'm a huge Eddie Hazel fan. P-Funk is one of like the core pillars of my musical upbringing. And Eddie Hazel, who some people call the other Jimi Hendrix, um, was a monster. I believe he's part of the 27 crowd, you know, died at 27. But um, Eddie Hazel was unbelievable. And so in the Ween video comments that I did before, there were no, the vast majority of the requests, I feel like, were for a tear for Eddie. Because it's like Diener's tribute to Eddie Hazel. So seeing this come up today, for you, Ben, you got it. Sincerely appreciate all the support along the way. You've been a great supporter of mine and the channel. Um, so happy to be your teacher and be your friend. Let's do it. This is Ween, A Tear for Eddie, live. Where's my, where's my clicker? All right, full screen. I have not learned this. Ice cold, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm talking about. That like, like, look at that background. Dude's just up there, big baggy jeans, you know, smoking a cigarette, just <laughs> like you used to. There he is. Is he barefoot?
the, the quality for the audio is a little rough here. Um, but I'm not going to choose a different version because this is the one that you uh, requested. So right off the bat, you're hearing this. Um, uh, first, I think it's an A, right? But it's an A over F sharp. So it's F sharp minor 7. You don't pick it up until the bass comes in. At least I did. And then to E major, first inversion. So E over G sharp. So that's a 2. 1 in E. Great, great, you know, F sharp Dorian to, you know, E major place to take a solo. Very Eddie Hazel. Love the effects. Let's keep going. Okay, there's so much cool stuff happening in here. Um, okay, first let's go over the changes. Um, leaves key. Uh, two, probably my favorite uh, chord change of all time, a dominant three. This is one of those chords where it's like you hear it. This is, I just did this video the other day for, for the um, fit, uh, Kingfish. Become an active listener. When you hear something that you're like, that's cool, Figure out what it is, not just how to play it, what it is, so it's in your memory bank for life. They're in F sharp minor. And then it goes to a dominant three, so that's G sharp, one, two, three, which should be minor, but that's not what they do, it's dominant. Yeah. That walk to the three dominant, that's probably my favorite chord change ever. So that. And it's a functioning dominant chord, meaning 5 1. So if G sharp dominant is 5, um, that means C sharp is 1. So that's where I'm listening to my head. I was like, oh, is it functioning? I hear that, that resolution. And now we're back in the key of E major, because it's C sharp minor. Then it goes up to A major, it's your four chord. Sounds like it might even be A over C sharp minor, like um, A major seven. I couldn't tell if that G sharp is in there at all. But then it goes back down to the G sharp dominant, and then back down to the F sharp. And then to E. There's your progression. And then you're, you're, I gotta go back to get the lines because I can tell that these, these are iconic lines, but it's that. that there he did, he did that. So you're in this E major pentatonic box. Pattern three, or you know, E major full. Right there, and you got. So when he's here over the F sharp chord, right? F sharp, 
he's going to the root of F sharp. Bending through it and pulling off to the root of E. So it's a melody based on root of the two to root of the one. Let's keep going. I feel like he's going to repeat. Same, root to root here. So he goes to the G sharp there, right? What is that note? G sharp. So again, root, this whole melody is based on hunting for the roots. Right? We're just going down. Remember the G sharp goes over to the C sharp, which is this whole chord up there. Finishes, and there's your root of the C sharp. So it's like you're teasing through it, but the melody always is resolving on the root of each chord. What's better than that? Simple is almost always the best. Just doing it. You hear him just go to it, go to a lower octave, but again, still focusing on the roots. You're not hearing the melody um, focus on different chord tones as the song progresses yet. I'm going to try to stop talking and just let it ride. I know you guys are all like, it's a button, right? But, um, <laughs> little Tourette's right there. Um, but, but that's what I'm hearing. It's important to know where the chord tones are in your scale shapes. I have a whole lesson on that over at Guitargate, like knowing where your chord tones are of the progression you're playing over in your whole scale shape. that to be on purpose or not but I don't that was great because he's staying straight on the rails the whole time even when he goes up into this position he's staying E major right bending from the, the nine same way he's going through. but then he does something wild <laughs> he had to have just missed that if he didn't that's even better but you're thinking what I assume he's thinking is I'm going to hit my flat, uh, my five and flat seven. You know, thinking E mixolydian, right? But staying with E, but, but just overshot it. And it went to flat six and major seven. And he jumped off it right away. I, like I said, I don't know if I want that to be real or not. It, it would fit with the band if that's what he does every night. All right, stop talking, Michael. That's too hot to not talk about. So, he gets weird and chromatic, you know? So he's down here and he goes. Right? Text. 
textbook E major run, right? E, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one. Okay, then he gets here, he's grabbing the major third, bending through it. And then he gets into this spot he's been in all night, right? You got the... And he starts doing this. So he's teasing a little minor through that, right? So, so root two, flat three, major three, right? And then he starts going over. See, this is one of those things, I forget who it was when I was in GIT, would say, you want to sound outside? Just look at your box, play a little outside. Not that hard, right? This is, you got your box and you like this little run? Let's move it over a string. And what do you have here? You got your five, flat five, three, flat three, two, one. And of course, major six. I mean, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Did it on the first string too. It's just a fingering. It's like a la Eddie Van Halen or Dimebag, Eddie, Eddie Hazel, you know? Like, it's just a fingering. It's just a shape. Use your ear. Does it sound cool? I mean, if it doesn't, just keep doing it. It'll get cooler. Like, I just, I love that. But you're hearing that sound. Root major seven. Six, right? It makes me think it's on purpose. Every now and again, he just goes up into the, you know, when it's an E. And then pulls it back down. But that vibrato, that, that, that heavy up and down, it's like the violin style that you see me do slowly, but real violent instead of the side to side. That is a really aggressive vibrato. Oh my God. So what, a, 
Again, it's weird and it's wild. I love I love Eddie Hazel, and you know these types of players, um, who don't think about the theory stuff that I'm that I talk about, right? I just try to explain it so that you can remember what it is, so you can use it in any scenario, not just when you're covering the tune that you learned it in, right? Um, that's the point of becoming an active listener and learning the names of things so that you can say, oh, that's that, I can use that anywhere I want. But these players that think like that, they think like this, right? They think in terms of sound and shapes and just explore in that that context, right? That tonal context, like Hendrix did, right? He didn't play in a bunch of crazy shapes, but he would bend through them and achieve things, which are, aren't there, right? But you get to there. I love those types of players. And I haven't actually gotten back into that, because that's where a lot of us start, um, for a long time. It makes me want to listen to Eddie Hazel and Hendrix again. You know, it really, really does. Um, but what I like about it is this is quintessentially major, right? He's committing to major, and the melody, the hook that you hear in your head on the way home, you know, the line when everybody, you know, the, you know, that, right? That, that hook, it's root to root, and even when it goes to my favorite change ever, the three dominant chord, goes to the root, right? When it functions back over to the C sharp, right? Your six, functioning dominant, um, to the root. So this is a great, great, great lesson in learning where your roots are of the chords and the progression in your singular scale shape. Learn it here, learn it up here, and then push around it. You know, you got the... You know, just just you have it and move around and use your ear. And him with the wah, just the whole vibe is just that tripped out. That's why it's called Tear for Eddie. I freaking love it. Diener, if, if you're watching this, come join me. Come be my guest. I'd love to talk about what you're thinking when you play this stuff. I think that'd be fascinating. For any of you guys that know him or can get in touch with him, Shoot him this video and remind him that like the offer's still on the table. Wholeheartedly. It would be my pleasure. So that's it. Ben, thank you for requesting this. And thanks for being a subscriber over at my website. I really appreciate it. That's how I support this channel. It's 10 bucks. You get all my lessons, full courses, everything, if you want to freshen up on any of this stuff. Um, and also, subscribe, like, but... Um, and keep leaving links in the comments. But I can't, I can't remember if I got to mention this. But I'm giving this away. I'm giving this away tomorrow. 9 o'clock, Tuesday, the 16th? I don't know. Um, live. I got a special surprise in store. All you have to do is hit the link in the description. And enter your email. And I'm going to pick someone live. Again, Tuesday. I think it's the 16th. I don't know. My phone. It's tomorrow, though. Right? Uh, today's Monday, if you're watching it today, um, but Tuesday, this Tuesday at like 9 p.m. ish, I got a nice surprise in store for you, and you could win this. This is my personal PRS Hollow Body 2, and I'm giving it away uh, to say thank you for reaching 100,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. See you real soon. Cheers.